And I'd like to welcome you all to today's um, uh, Thursday session, which will be covering some classic games for you. And today we'll be covering some tabletop games uh, that you may have played uh, when you were um, younger, including myself. And I uh, hope, hope you all enjoy. So I'm going to go ahead and read our disclaimer before we get started. The Wild Tech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance Virtual health well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by WildTech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by WildTech, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. Um, for today's session, I recommend that you have your iPad vertically um, because I have a vertical presentation today. So if you have your iPads vertically as I do, you're, you're, it fills the whole screen. So um, try to do that. We learned how to turn off and on our rotation lock through the control center. So I, that's what I recommend. If you cannot see me or see the screen or hear me, please let me know in the chat and I would really appreciate that. Um, to keep our meetings organized and of course avoid talking over each other, have some kind of etiquette. Um, we all want to be able to utilize the raise hand feature. So either during or at the end of our sessions, you have the opportunity to ask questions using this feature. You can access it by hitting, excuse me, um, more at the top right of your screen, and then you will hit raise hand. And that is how you raise your hand in Zoom. So can I get everyone in Zoom to please raise their hand? So now that you're, you're here, that you're present, that you're uh, ready to learn, have your pen and paper next to you, you can take notes, that would be great. Um, but just, I want you to feel confident, empowered, independent to voice if you have a question, comment, or concern, this is how you get the uh, host uh, attention. So we have about uh, 26 folks on, so thank you to more than half of you for raising your hand, thank you so much. Um, so can I see if we can get some more hands, want to get as close to 100% as possible. So if you have not raised your hand um, in Zoom, please do so. So I know that, again, you're here, ready to learn and know how to ask a question, comment, or concern if you need to. So we just reached 20. Thank you, uh, Bridget, for being number 20. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I know, you know, others have raised their hands in the past, but uh, just make sure you know how to, if you ever have a question or a comment or concern, you can raise your hand. You can lower your hand by hitting lower at the bottom. Again, in real life, if, you know, uh, once a, you know, professor, whoever calls on you, you know, you lower your hand. So um, just make sure that once, you know, the presenter has finished or the, uh, you know, answering to the best of their ability your question that you lower your hand. So I want everyone in Zoom to please hit lower at the bottom to lower their hand to those that haven't done so already. <laughs> oh, um, I, I hope uh, it comes um, or, uh, better for you, Ms. Uh, Doris. I hope, I hope things work out. Um, but thanks for coming on. Uh, yes, and today is National Pecking Duck Day. So, <laughs> you know, there's a day for everything. <laughs> but uh, thank you. All of you all have lowered your hand. Really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> in addition to raising your hand, if you hit more, you'll see these different um, emojis or reactions you can send. So, you know, there are some there already for you. But uh, if you hit these three dots, you're able to uh, choose any emoji that Apple has. So just like before, I want everyone in Zoom to please send a, uh, a reaction, and, you know? I'll shout those out that do. So thank you for your thumbs up, Mr. Ronald, you know? Um, you know, anytime I say, did, you know, you got it, or, you know, you say yes or no, you know, a thumbs up is a great reaction. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you, Miss Melanie, for yours. Love those hearts. Those are one of my favorites. Uh, thank you, Mr. Philip, for yours as well. That's a funny one. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> one of the, that's really cute. Um, it's Brenda, uh, them eyes, you know, I send them after text, you know, if it's my friend, 
And they respond, I send them a little ah, like, where are you at? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. And if you want to see other folks' reaction, you can do so by tapping participants and seeing the other reactions. So that's a lot of fun. Um, just as a reminder, I do see we have some folks without their names. So make sure that you have your first and last name in Zoom. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, last but not least for today, if you want to utilize the chat, um, if you want to communicate with others non-verbally, you can uh, share a greeting like a good afternoon, happy Thursday, um, stay warm, <laughs> anything like that. You can uh, share um, you know, a, a question in the chat. Uh, you're able to share your congrats, encourage others. You can put resources and information or prayers or quotes or anything you like to share in the chat. You can do that by tapping more. And again, when you hit chat, you're able to then get to this window where then it will say tap here to chat. You tap there, type your message in and uh, send it using the blue triangle button on the right hand side. Um, so I want everyone in Zoom to please send a chat. Um, so that way, you know, you uh, can just say hello when you guys get on, you know, a simple hello. We make someone's day, that would be nice. And, uh, you know, you could share pictures as well, just like Ms. Brenda has done. Oh, don't, don't make me hungry, Brenda. <laughs> Those are looking really good. But if you hit the plus sign, you're able to then tap uh, right, right next to here, you're able to tap photo and you're able to even add a photo from your photos app as Brenda uh, has done. So uh, I want everyone in Zoom to please send the chat. It could be something as simple as a hello, uh, good afternoon, happy Thursday. <laughs> oh, I know, right, Mr. Harold? Like, why would she send that picture? It looks so good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm so distracted. <laughs> Oh, no, but good job. Uh, and good job for replying, Mr. Harold. Um, you see there are little, a few buttons below each chat. So if you hold it, you can then reply to others as well. Yeah, stay warm. Everyone have a blessed day. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Yvonne, for your chats. You sent them to me. Um, I think you meant to send it to everyone. So make sure it says send to everyone, okay? when you send a message. So Yvonne, you, you sent them to me as a direct message, but uh, I, I love them. So I try to send them as a regular message to everyone. But uh, wow, I, I want that, uh, I want that what you sent. <laughs> Thank you all for the wonderful chats. You know, be sure to utilize the chat during not just this session, but any Zoom session that you attend. Um, and it just makes for a more immersive experience, so. Thank you so much for coming on and I look forward to presenting today's session. So today we'll be talking about tabletop games, its history and how these games arose in popularity. We'll be navigating our three apps for the day, which is a real chess 3D. So you play some chess, uh, Fleet Battle, um, which is a version of uh, you know the, the battleship game. And last but not least is uh, Uno. So we'll be playing uh, Uno today as well. And you all be able to learn how to do it yourselves um, by attending this session. Last but not least, we'll be having our overview and discussion and talk about how you know, these games have you know, positively impacted our lives. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna cover today is the history and some fun facts of tabletop games. So. You know, take some notes if you like, but this is just a lot of fun. So, you know, do what is most comfortable. So what is tabletop gaming? When someone says I play tabletop games, what do they mean? A tabletop game is a type of game that is typically played on a flat surface, such as a table, hence the name, or a board. It involves physical components like game boards, cards, dice, tokens, and player pieces. Um, tabletop games can come in various forms and genres. Some are strategic, cooperative, competitive, and may even focus on chance. <laughs> These games can range from classic board games like chess, Monopoly, or Scrabble, to modern board games like uh, Settlers of Caden or Pandemic. So, you know, if you have a favorite tabletop game, we'll be having our discussion later at the end, of course, but I would love for you to share it in the chat. Uh, if you have a favorite uh, board game that you play or have played in the past. 
So now a bit of, uh, of history. So the history of tabletop games can be traced back uh, thousands of years. The earliest known tabletop games originated in ancient civilizations. Ancient Egyptians played Senate um, around 3500 BCE, so mm, a long time ago, which involved moving pieces along a track. And this video here just showcases how to play the game and it's just more information for you to know. I, I didn't hear, um, I've heard of Senate before, but I never knew actually knew what it looked like. So uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this quick video as well. Senate is an ancient Egyptian board game designed for two players. The goal of the game... Oops, my bad. Senate is an ancient Egyptian board game designed for two players. The goal of the game is to be the first player to get all of your pieces off of the board before the other player. To play, you will need a Senate board, Senate sticks, which work like traditional dice, and four or five color-coded pieces for each player. Have any of you played Senate before? To set up, Would love to start know. by placing all of the pieces in the first row in an alternating pattern so that no player has two pieces sitting next to one another. Players take turns by throwing the Senate sticks down to see how many spaces they can move. The sticks are color-coded like or marked dice, in some right? way <laughs> with the blank or light side counting as face up. If zero sticks are face up, you can move five spaces and get to go again. For one face up stick, you move one space and get an extra turn. The two or three allows you to move two or three spaces respectively. If all four of the sticks land face up, you can move four places and get an extra turn. Pieces move around the board in a serpentine pattern, and a player can move any piece they'd like. If you move a piece to a square occupied by the other player's piece, you send the opponent's piece back to the square you just <laughs> moved from. However, if a player has more than one of their pieces in an adjacent row, you cannot land on their pieces. Players may jump pieces, though. If a player cannot move on their turn, it automatically moves on to the next player. There are five special spaces on the board. There are two safe squares where the opponent cannot send your piece back. The Power of Life and the House of Beauty, mm. which are located near the center of the board. It's so cool. <laughs> Below that, there is the House of Water. If you land there, you go back to the Power of Life square. And if that's occupied, you roll again. There is also the House of Three Spirits, which is a safe square that requires a roll of a three to get out of it. Finally, there is the House of Twos, which requires a two to get out of. Play continues until the game ends whenever a player gets all of their pieces off of the board, and that player is declared <laughs> the winner. Wow, so that's how you play Senate. So of course, you know, we're, we, we, only, we can only cover only so many apps or games at one time. So, you know, if you, Go into the app store and literally type in Senate into the search. You can probably find some different games uh, uh, in where you can play Senate, but on your iPad. So um, just wanted to show you all that. Uh, so that was an ancient time. So moving on to the classical era, the Greeks and Romans had their own board games. The Greeks played um, Patea, a strategic game similar to chess, and the Romans enjoyed Ludus the Trumpelorum a tactical game involving capturing opponents' uh, pieces. So again, some uh, additional information. Uh, if I look up something, um, I know that the ancient Mesopotamians, um, I had this note coming up, so let me see if I can find it in my session. Um, but they, they had their own game. So it's just so interesting to think about how each, you know, culture um, had their own games and their own versions of it. Um, yes, the ancient Mesopotamians played the world game of Ur, you are a board game with a race-like objective. So, you know, with the, even back then, they still had a board, pieces, you know, the sticks in this case for Senate were like dice, and they had special squares on the board. So you know, it's not too much different than what we do now, but just in a more uh, modern way, right? 
Um, moving on to the medieval period and Renaissance, um, chess, which originated in India, spread throughout the world during the Middle Ages. You know, that's why it's so popular to this day, right? And it had many cultural variations. Uh, backgammon, originating in Persia, also gained popularity. So, um, you know, uh, growing up, I had kind of a 10 in one little set where I could play like backgammon, chess, checkers, you know, some dice games, etc. But I never really got into backgammon. So, uh, again, if you've played backgammon before or not, you know, I'd love to see it in the chat while the video plays. But this is also how to play backgammon. And, you know, same thing you can go on the App Store and search backgammon for is a two uh, any backgammon games that you see. So player board game that is played on a backgammon board, which is a board divided in the middle with 12 triangular spaces called points in each quadrant. Each player sits on opposite sides of the board and has 15 color coded checkered pieces to play with. The goal of the game is to be the first to remove all of your pieces off of the board, mm. which is also called bearing off. <laughs> To set the game up, the first player sets three pieces up in a vertical row at the base of the fifth point from their left, in the bottom half of the board, and five pieces in the first point directly to the bottom right of the board's partition. Then, that player lines up five pieces at the leftmost point at the top left, and two pieces in the last point on the top right. Mm. <laughs> The opposing player sets their colors' pieces up to mirror their opponent's stuff. pieces, <laughs> so that each row of two has a mirror row of two on the opposite side. Each row of three has a mirror row of three, and so on. The first player's pieces are only allowed to move counterclockwise, starting in the top right. Mm -hmm. The second player's pieces are only allowed to move clockwise, starting at the top on their left. To start play, players take alternating turns rolling two six-sided dice. For each of the numbers that gets rolled, the rolling player moves one or two pieces based on the numbers rolled on the dice. So a roll of five and two would allow the rolling player to move one piece two points and another piece five points. Alternatively. That player can move one piece seven points. Rolling two of the same number allows that player to move four times. For example, a roll of two and two allows that player to move a total of eight points. Although each piece being moved must travel two points at a time, players cannot move a piece to a point that is occupied by two or more of their opponent's pieces, but may stack their own pieces on a single point. If a player moves a piece to a point with only one of their opponent's pieces on it, that opposing player's piece is removed from their turn. <laughs> they must use at least one so of their rolls to remove that piece <laughs> from the partition and start it over from the beginning point on their side of the board. Once all of a player's pieces are in the quadrant of the board closest to the end, that player may begin removing pieces off of the board. Once a player moves a piece one point past the edge of the board, it is removed from the game. A player wins once all of their pieces are removed from the board. Wow. <laughs> so that's how you can, that's how you play that game. And so again, just like with Senna in this game, you can search it on the app store and search for those different apps for these games. If you would like to, you know, have a throwback moment and try a game out. Moving on um, to the 18th, 19th, and 20th century, uh, the Industrial Revolution that occurred from 1760 to 1840 brought uh, advancements in printing and manufacturing, which allowed board games to flourish. Games like Snakes and Ladders, <laughs> uh, which originated from India, became widely played. Um, and Monopoly was created in 1903 and, and of course became one of the most iconic and successful board games of all time. Uh, Scrabble, Clue, and Risk also emerged uh, at this time as well. 
Uh, moving on to, you know, uh, the late 1900s and, you know, now, um, because of advancements in technology, board games expanded to role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, strategy games like Settlers of Caden, and cooperative games like Pandemic. These advancements also led to the development of video games and computer-based board game adaptations. Yes, yeah, so if we didn't have board games, we would have never had video games or games on the app store or, or anything virtual of that nature. So uh, I love my games and my app. So I have a lot to be thankful for for board games. Uh, today, tabletop games continue to evolve with innovative designs and a vibrant global gaming community. They serve as a source of entertainment, uh, social interaction, and the most, you know, in, along with social interaction, the most important intellectual stimulation, which you know helps us foster memorable experiences and uh, connections among uh, players. So you know, playing a game, it's it, it's fun, but it also you know involves you know um, you know you're being social. And, you know, just uh, these processes and these uh, challenges, you have to really think to see how you can go best about with your strategy. So playing games not only helps you have fun, but also mentally, physically, socially, et cetera. So, you know, there's always a little more to what you think. So if you don't really consider yourself a gamer, you know, starting off with what came before is a great way to then segue into some more modern things. So. So yeah, that's just a, a little bit of history. Um, this next video is just all about board games, which we've been talking about, and just a crash course on, um, on how they came to be and some fun facts and information. So I hope you all enjoy. After this, we'll be going into our apps. So look forward to you know, us having a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Andre Meadows, and this is Crash Course Games. Today, we're gonna be looking at one of the biggest genres. Oops. Hi, I'm Andre Meadows, and this is Crash Course Games. Today we're going to be looking at one of the biggest genres of games. The games many players associate with family and friends, games that have been making a comeback in recent years, we're talking about board games. Now there are tons of board games out there, but we're going to take a slightly different approach today and look really closely at just two board games that define their eras. The family classic Monopoly and that game that brought Euro games to the US, Settlers of Catan. And we'll try to touch on how their histories and reception have helped define the genre. Life, Risk, Clue, Sorry, Hi-Ho Cheerio! These are some of the many <laughs> games that have been the cornerstones of the family game night for decades. Though board games have existed for thousands of years, these games have seen unprecedented popularity within the last hundred or so, and now have countless variations. Many of these games, though not all, could be called American-style games. Loosely, these games are defined as having pretty long playtimes involving luck and often staging conflict between players. And arguably, the most popular American board game has all of these qualities, Monopoly. In 2015, Hasbro's Vice President of Game Marketing, Jonathan Berkowitz, stated that over a billion people have played Monopoly around the world. Monopoly is played in 114 countries and has been translated into 47 different languages. Mm, it's a global game. So why right? is Monopoly so successful? It could be due to its easy-to-learn game mechanics, customizable gameplay, and broad audience appeal. Hasbro itself claims that one of the reasons Monopoly has endured for generations oh is that it offers a classic <laughs> gameplay that appeals to kids, parents, and grandparents alike. But according to the Monopolist author Mary Pylon, Monopoly's success probably stems from the fact that it has an element of role play which provides people a context to do things that we can't typically do in real life. In Monopoly, that means playing the role of the rich entrepreneur, owning lots of property and making lots of money fast. But <laughs> Monopoly isn't without scandal. A game about making money fast and owning real estate having scandal? What a shock! Let's go to the thought bubble. <laughs> Charles Darrow claimed to have invented Monopoly in 1933 while unemployed during the Great Depression. Allegedly, he developed the gameplay on an old oil cloth to entertain his family and friends. He became incredibly rich when he sold his idea to the game company Parker Brothers. It was the classic rags to riches story, but that's not really Monopoly's true origin. The game was actually conceived by Elizabeth Lizzie McGee in 1903. Mm. Lizzie was an artist, Can inventor, and that? feminist that opposed the business practices of some of the biggest industry titans at the time, like Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller. To voice her opposition to the injustices of capitalism, she invented and received a patent for a game called The Landlord's Game. It allowed players to play one of two roles as the monopolist, attempting to acquire as much wealth as possible while destroying opponents, or as the anti-monopolist, acquiring wealth fairly to win. 
Lizzie hoped that people would play as the anti-monopolist and start opposing the business practices of the time. And the landlord's game was sold for a short time and became popular enough that it was shared and expanded upon by other players. An altered version of the landlord's game by the Quakers was the game that Charles Darrow copied and sold to Parker Brothers as Monopoly in 1935. Lizzie eventually got some compensation for her contributions to the game when Parker Brothers purchased her patent so they could enforce it against other game publishers who released similar games. Lizzie's game would reach a huge audience, but now it doesn't deliver the anti-capitalist message she intended. Thanks, Thought Bubble. So scandal notwithstanding, Monopoly also has its critics. Users of the gaming community Board Game Geek rank Monopoly among its 20 worst games. That's out of 10,000 games. And 538 writer <laughs> Oliver Roeder mined this community's right? reviews and found some consistent frustrations within its gaming mechanics, such as the fact that players can be eliminated quickly, making it pretty difficult to have fun when they can't participate. Monopoly also frequently suffers from a runaway leader problem, where a player's early luck quickly compounds into an insurmountable lead. The average playtime around <laughs> three hours, much of which is spent waiting on other players, probably doesn't help either. Many of these criticisms stem from the American style genre Monopoly helped define, but players' options would expand with the introduction of Euro games in the United States. Euro games are different from traditional American style board games in a number of ways. They generally have shorter play times, indirect player interaction, usually revolve around economic themes and emphasize strategy over luck and conflict. Sometimes these games are called German style games as many of them are produced in Germany, which just so happens to publish more board games than any other country per capita. In 1995, the Settlers of Catan paved the way for the genre in the United States and outside Europe. It wasn't the first German game outside of Germany, but it was the first to see this kind of success. Mm. Settlers of Catan was created by the legendary German game designer and four-time German Game of the Year winner Klaus Teuber. Players act as settlers on the island of Catan, hence the game's name. Players try to build settlements, manage the resources of wool, grain, ore, brick, and lumber, avoid the robber, and try to obtain 10 victory points to win the game. And each game is mm. different since the board is made like of multiple adjustable cool. tiles that are placed <laughs> randomly on the main board at the beginning of the game. Writer and game designer Richard Dansky says that Catan is a resource management game defined by position and strategizing, a social game defined by horse trading of resource cards, a game of chance ruled by dice rolls and card draw, a hardcore game and a light social pastime and everything in between. Settlers of Catan has sold over 22 million copies and has been translated into mm. 30 languages. The Washington Post called Catan the board game of our time, while Wired Magazine called it the Monopoly Killer, since it's become one of the most popular board games of all time, rivaling both Risk and Monopoly. Settlers of Catan has even gone on to spawn the Catan Championships, and in 2015, at the Spiel in Essen, Germany, 1,040 people played it simultaneously, oh, setting gosh. a world record. It's part of a new and growing wave of analog that board games so that are cool continuing to, to take hold of the public. And board games aren't just a big deal within their genres. For example, ICV2 states that sales of hobby games were up 20% from 2013 and were double those from 2008. The site also claims that American and Canadian citizens spent nearly $700 million on analog hobby games, of which $75 million were board game sales. 2015 data suggests that these overall hobby game sales are up nearly 26% since 2013. Now these numbers pale in comparison to video games, but they definitely demonstrate an upward trend mm -hmm. of tabletop and board game sales. And with Kickstarter, an increased number of games are being made and supported by the gaming community. As of May 2016, mm -hmm. there are 200 and 27 tabletop game projects on Kickstarter, with about a third of them being fully funded. So it seems like many people are buying games, and the way people gather around these games is changing too. With the introduction of the internet, more and more people are finding others like themselves to play these board games. In Germany, the city of Essen annually holds one of the largest tabletop and board gaming festivals in the world, known as the International Spieltage, aka the Spiel. Last year they had around 160,000 attendees and 900 exhibitors just what? for tabletop and board games. And people like to do more than just play board games and attend game related events, they're interested in watching other people play board games too. On Tabletop, a popular YouTube series, a different board game is reviewed each episode as it's being played. The hosts have reviewed everything from Pandemic, where players play as medics, eradicating several highly infectious diseases from the world, to Eldritch Horror, where players combat Lovecraftian monsters while exploring the earth. I was on an episode of Tabletop once. Hashtag humble brag. Tabletop gaming has become such a popular part of social life that board game cafes have popped up around the world and can be found in London, New York. There's one in Toronto that's aptly named Snakes and Lattes. But Shanghai, China is currently the one in the lead with an estimated 1,000 board game cafes. Cool. So as you can see, <laughs> board games are an important genre of gaming. Classic family games have infiltrated many people's lives and the introduction and proliferation of Euro games suggests they will have an ever-increasing role. And we haven't even talked about the most popular board game 
in the world. But we'll get to that next week when we talk about gaming's role in education. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Yeah, so just more information about where some of our favorite games came from. And, you know, I never heard of Settlers of Catan before uh, researching this. So, you know, it's always more to the world than you think. So it's, it's always fun to find out more, uh, more things. So um, I hope you all enjoyed and I loved all the chat and, and uh, well, the banter in the chat. It's, uh, um, I, I definitely <laughs> chuckled a few times reading that. But, but yeah, we're all about board games. So now going into our apps, we'll be playing Real Chess 3D, Fleet Battle, and Uno. So uh, first up is Real Chess 3D. Real Chess 3D is one of the most realistic and enjoyable chess games available on mobile. You can learn and play chess in several interactive tutorials. Uh, customize the look and feel of your game by choosing your board, your checkers, your piece type, table, etc. Um, you tap on a piece, basically when you're playing, to choose it and then tap on the desired target position to make your move. Uh, some features include uh, playing against the uh, AI or the computer with four different difficulty levels. You can play against other, you know, other people and uh, there's the music is quite relaxing as well so um just like you know when we download an app we're going to need to go to the app store and download it from there so i'm going to hit my home button and then go to uh my app store here okay and on the bottom right hand side you're going to hit search because we're trying to search for an app to download and then you're going to type in the type or name of the app that you want so I'm gonna type in real chess and then you see it already, it even already came up here. So I can just tap on the result that I want. And then it's right here on the top right hand side, real chess 3D has over a, a more than a hundred thousand uh, ratings. So it's a very, very uh, popular app. You can see more about the app in here, but essentially where on mine it says open on yours is gonna say get if you have not downloaded it yet. So you'll hit get, Make sure you install the um, app by, you know, inputting whatever information it asks, most likely your Apple ID, and then you're gonna download it and open it. So without further ado, let's go into the app. And again, I, on um, this, so I, um, this should look exactly like when you guys start um, the app as well. Um, so that way you can see what's going on. So look, it says our app wants to stay free. Um, talk about ads. So do you want relevant ads or not? So I just always say allow or whatever. But there you go. You're basically in the game. I'm going to go to settings, but you all should be able to hear the audio. And, and, it's, and it's nice. Let me see if I can. I just lowered it very low. So I uh, uh, hope you're all able to hear me. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's the settings. And look at this. So um, there's a start game or you can hit learn chess and you can even customize um, like your pieces, board, et cetera. So let me go to customize. So look the pieces I want. I'm just tapping. Uh, I like I love the gray, but I, I do like the little brown and white. So I'll do that. The, the checkers. Uh, I like this. I like the second one right here. Pretty clean the border, all these different options. I like this one and the table. I'm gonna choose a dark table or light. I like the light better. So um, there you go. So I just customized the board and then I'm gonna hit learn chess. And then look, they have all the different, le you know, the lessons. So if you've never played chess before, you can learn literally from this app. It's free, really easy to access. So we'll go through it. So pawn. You know, a pawn can only move forward one square if that square is empty. If it has not yet moved, a pawn also has the option of moving two squares forward and both squares are empty. So what do I do? I can, I have to hold. So um, when I have to go through the arrow, tap on the pawn square and then tap on any of the indicated green squares to move. Legal, legal moves are indicated with a green square. So I'm gonna tap on the piece and look, I can either move it one or two just like the actual, you know, board game, right? I'm gonna move it two spaces. And that's one lesson. So I'm gonna hit next. 
and you keep going. So the rook, it moves any number of empty squares horizontally or vertically, and it cannot jump over other pieces. So I'm gonna hit the arrow, and look, when I tap on the rook, I can move it in any of those green squares. So I'm gonna move it right here. And you keep going. Um, you learn more about the different, uh, the different pieces. And look, this is an example of an advertisement, you know, because this app is free, you know, some of them have advertisements. So I have to wait for like an X or a delete to come up for me to get out of the ad. So um, I try to find apps that don't have too many ads or no ads at all. But sometimes, uh, you know, um, sometimes you, you know, the, these uh, ads are needed because the developers, that's how they get paid. So that way they can create more apps. But this one, I had to wait. And then look, the X finally appeared right here. So I can hit the X. Um, so yeah, you can learn chess just from this section. So pawn, rook, knight, bishop, queen, king, um, how to read the, the board, um, how to check and talk about checkmates and stillmates. And even these special moves, I, I'm, I'm not an avid chess player. So, you know, even I'm still learning to this day, but, but yeah, if you want to start playing, you hit start game and I'm going to select an empty save slot. So look, I can either um, play versus the computer or if you're with someone next to you, you can do a pass and play. So one person has the iPad and the next person gets the iPad and does their move and it's literally a pass and play. Um, so I'm going to just do versus the computer, enter my name. I'm just going to write AB, whatever you can write, Alex, or your, <laughs> well, you can write your name. You can write anything that you want. Uh, I'll change my avatar, do will, whatever you like to do, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start game. I'm going to do an easy game. So look, uh, that undoes your last move. You can switch the camera with that button. You can pause menu with that. And you can rotate the camera by moving your finger or pinching in and out. So look, I'll move first. So let me do this. Let me move the pawn. And then the computer goes. And you know, there are different modes. You can do easy, normal, hard, very hard, etc. So I just did that. Um, so I'm just going to keep, keep going. <laughs> and then you can tap on each piece to, and see where it can go. Right. So, uh, some pieces can move over ones and some pieces cannot. So, uh, I will just move, let's see this one right here. So I'll play some and then we'll, uh, we'll go on. But as you can see, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, once you get the hang of it. So look, that the computer moved that piece up too, but look, because this is a pawn, I can actually overtake that other pawn and get and get rid of that piece. So again, I have not played chess in, <laughs> well, since I did last this session, to be honest, uh, but it's, uh, you know, you just play, you learn as you play, you learn as you go. Yeah, and it even tells you this piece cannot be moved because it, it basically will result in a checkmate. So sometimes it even gives you little hits. So I just move the horse over there. Wow, and that piece just made it over here. So uh, what I can do, I can't get rid of this pawn, but I will be getting rid of this piece because the uh, the queen or king, I don't remember that piece, I should, um, but it will overtake it. So let me just go forward and, you know, you get the point, you know, you, you, you uh, keep going. Oh, wow. So now I'm in literally in a, in checkmate. So I have to move this. Well, I can, I don't know why the computer would do that. It just let me take that piece. <laughs> yep. Uh, Bridget. So, you know, I, I still <laughs> don't know the names, but you know what, you know, sometimes you just go for it and you learn as you go. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to pause it for now. When you hit the pause, you know, you can restart or, you know, just go back to the main menu or adjust your settings like the sound. But again, uh, I love the sound on here. So, uh, you know, it's up to you. So that is the, uh, the real chess 3D. Okay. So I hope you all enjoyed that one and get and try to download it if you'd like. 
Um, next up is fleet battle. So imagine yourself in charge of the flight desk on an aircraft carrier, a common sailor on a submarine or a patrol boat, gun crewman on an agile cruiser, sonar listener on a destroyer or the captain of a deadly battleship. Do your duty on all the ships of your brand armada, take command of the naval forces at your disposal and play your boats in the perfect formation. Destroy the enemy flotilla in a blitz of tactical prowess. <laughs> Fleet Battle brings the classic board game battleship to your mobile device. Uh, defeat ship after ship and rise through the ranks from seaman recruit all up to admiral of the Navy. So again, this is based on the classic board game called Battleship. So this video um, will show you all how the game is played um, and I will see what it looks like virtually as well. So um, yeah, add playing. The objective of Battleship is to sink all of your opponent's ships before they sink yours. To begin, each player grabs a Battleship box and secretly arranges their five so the ships iPad, you don't need on the lower grid. You just need your iPad. <laughs> Every ship must be completely on the grid and cannot be placed diagonally or overlapping another ship. Once this is done, player one takes a shot. To take mm -hmm. a shot, name a square on the upper grid using the letter and number coordinates. For example, the square in the top left corner is A1, as it is in the row labeled A and in the column labeled 1. <laughs> Player 2 then looks at the coordinates on their lower grid. If the coordinates denote any empty square, Player 2 says, Miss. Player 1 should put a white peg in their upper grid at the coordinates to show there is nothing there. If the coordinates well. <laughs> denote a white square with part of a ship on it, player 2 says, hit. Then, player 1 places a red peg in their upper grid at those coordinates, and player 2 places a red peg on the spot of their ship that was hit. Regardless of whether a shot was a hit or a miss, the next player will then take a shot. When every square of a ship gets hit, the player who placed that ship says, You sunk my ship. The <laughs> game ends when somebody sinks all of their opponent's ships. Yeah, so that's how you play, you know, play the tabletop version of a uh, battleship. So with the more modern updates, you know, there will be some slight changes. Like instead of, if you hit someone else's, if you hit the other opponent's ship, you actually get to go again in this game. So it's, it's a, uh, you know, high stakes, high reward um, kind of situation. So it's a lot of fun. So just like before, we're gonna go to the app store and hit the search to search for this app. So it's this one there, you know, there are many battleship games of course, and likewise, there are many chess apps or games on the iPad. So, um, you know, I, I just chose the ones that I seen that I thought were easy to access. So I'm going to hit Fleet Battle. And it's right here at the top right hand side. Fleet Battle, Sea Battle game has uh, over 10,000 ratings. And, um, and yeah, it's still being updated to this day. The latest update was six days ago. So this app is always being updated as well. So you're going to get the app. Again, on my end, it says open because I've already downloaded it, but you should see get um, if you have not, and you should follow the steps to then download the app. So again, like before, I'm going to go ahead and open the app, and let's play some, uh, some fleet battle. <laughs> yeah, so this is what it looks like when it comes up. So, uh, you know, it says downloading required assets, so it's just taking... Um, a few seconds to download some additional uh, data for it to be able to run. Um, but as you can see, it's quite fast. So it'll only take a couple of seconds. But just make sure, again, you follow the prompts on the screen. But uh, again, I'm opening up for the uh, first time again on my iPad so you all can see um, as close to possible as what you'll see when you open these apps up.
So there you go. That was finished again for the ads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit allow up to you. And the uh, the game is still loading. So there you go. This is this is the game. So uh, again, on the left hand side is kind of uh, your menu. I'm gonna go to options and turn off the music. <laughs> so that way you're all able to hear me. But that is the menu option. So, you know, news, gift codes, instructions, if you need to look at the instructions for the game, um, et cetera. So there are in-app purchases. So things that cost um, actual money, but you know, uh, you don't necessarily need to buy anything to play the game. So it's just something extra. Um, but of course, everything is pretty much free to play. So uh, these different options, it's your home screen. These are the different blueprints to your ships. And then uh, you can set up your fleets kind of before you play as well. So um, with the fleets that I have, I'm going to move the here. is a harsh mistress. Here. Gonna Coordinates go. reached. Yep, so. Battle group in position. I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to hit save. And sure, you can enter a name if you'd like. But yeah, I'm going to go to my home screen. And you can play against online versus random uh, players. Um, play with friends, so you can uh, you can play based on the Wi-Fi. Um, you can play player one versus player two on one device as well. Uh, you can even play against the computer if you want. So um, so there are many different options: quick match, play with friends, Wi-Fi, player one, player two on the same device, or just a single player playing versus the computer. Um, uh, so to answer your question, Miss Melanie. Uh, so um, it's not following, it's just follow, it, it's uh, for the activity regarding. So it, it, it doesn't follow any of that information. It just follows some of the trends that, um, you know, you have. So uh, again, either option is okay. It doesn't affect your experience on the app and it certainly doesn't affect anything of that nature. So uh, yeah, so, so I'll just focus on that. So let's go ahead and play um, a game. So uh, yeah. So even here, shot rule. So you can either have a hitting streak or one shot, any other options, um, but you can adjust those things. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm good. So I'm going to hit continue and let's start. All hands to battle stations. Yep. So again, uh, the, you know, we, I'm gonna. Uh, it's our turn first. So our formations here on the left and on the right is the enemy formation. So I'm gonna select a box and see if we get a hit. So uh, you all can put some in the chat that you recommend, like A1, C4, F8, whatever you'd like, and we'll try those as well. But I'll also share some tips. So let me try the middle. Maybe F5. So like I missed, that's why there's an X. So again, there's no pieces required. It's so easy just to do it from your iPad. So, you know, I love playing physical games sometimes, but it's somewhat, it may be some, really easy just to do it on, you know, virtual. Oh, look, I just, I just got a hit, you guys. <laughs> so that way I can go again because I got it. I got a hit. So, you know, it can be, you see here on the left, it says enemy fleet. So one ship is just two squares in a straight line. One is three squares in a straight line. Some of them have different formations. So um, I'm going to assume or think that it's just uh, a straight line. I'll, I'll try that first. And look, let me do D3. Let me see if it's there. So look, I just got another hit just by thinking of what it may be. Because if the ship is there, it's going to be somewhere in that area. So that's two. So I know that it's not the two ship. It's maybe the three or maybe one of a four or a five. So let me try E3 right next to it. And look, another hit. So that's not the two or the three. Um, it, it may be at D2, it may be at D4, or maybe longer. So let me try F3. Look, another hit. So just, you keep going. And it may be the five, right? So let's see if it's at G. We hit him hard. So look, we just got, you know, we, we did it uh for for that one uh, let me see above it if there are any chips 
So again, you just, you, you keep going. So again, any suggestions in the chat? We'd love to see it. You're like I8, J9, anything of that nature. So let me try up here. Blueprints found. Oh, that was cool. Uh, something for the game. You know, we just did blueprints, so something to add to our game. Let me try E7. So another miss. So my, you see my opponent keeps missing, and, you know, I got them in this point. So, uh, so yeah. Um, let me see. H5. And you see you, uh, you keep going, so. Yep, and sometimes it goes like that. So look, I just hit another ship, um, H10. Um, I'll, I'll try that next. But look, another one. So let me see if it's anywhere around H2. Yeah. And let me, I, it's probably this one where it has two up and three, uh, three on the side. So hmm. <laughs> they okay. missed. You suck the battleship. So I just oh so that so they this opponent they placed all their ships in this one area. So you see that's something not to do because I didn't realize that it was other ships. So I just sunk that ship. And this two right here, there's only so few combinations for it. So I think G2 is one. Yep, so it's gonna be this one, the last one where there's three and there's three up here. Target terminated. So I just got that one, right? Uh, H10, let me try that. And as you can see, you can keep going and going, but you know, I, it looks like that I may be able to win. So wish we had some more time, but I just wanted to show you how easy that is. And you know, some of the strategy you can uh, think of while playing this game. So I hope you all enjoy. Uh, last but not least for today, uh, one of my favorite games, and I still play to this day, is Uno. Uno is now mobile. Take the classic card game from the kitchen table anywhere. Now with new rules, World Series tournaments, modes of play, and much more. Uno is a fun and memorable family-friendly card game that can be enjoyed wherever and whenever. So um, just like before, this, uh, this video um, showcases uh, how to play Uno if you have not played it before. Um, um, and I hope you all enjoy before we go on to our last app for the day. No, you'll need at least two players. But the more you have, the better. Start by dealing seven cards to each player. Then place the remaining cards face down in the middle of the table. This is the draw pile. Turn the first card of the draw pile face up and place it in a separate pile. This is the discard pile. The first player starts by playing a card that matches either the number, color, or type of the card on top of the discard pile. If a player wants to change the color in a play for any reason, they can play a wild card and choose a new color. If the player can't play any of their cards, they must draw a card from the draw pile. If the card drawn matches the color, number, or type of the card on top of the discard pile, they can play it. If not, the game moves on to the next player. As soon as a player is down to just one card, they must yell, UNO, before anyone else notices. If anyone else says UNO first, the player must draw two cards <laughs> from the draw pile. You gotta remember to say UNO. The player that plays all of their cards wins. As you play, you will notice several types of cards. A skip card that skips the next player. A reverse card that changes the direction of play. A draw two card that forces that next player to draw two cards and, and skip their turn. turn. <laughs> and a wild draw four card, which is a combination of a wild and a draw card. These cards make the game even more fun. Yeah, so that's how you play Uno. So just like before, you're going to go on your app store and you're going to type in the name or the type of app that you would like to download. So I'm just going to simply type in Uno. 
and hit the search and it's right here on the top right hand side. It has over 500,000 um, ratings and is the number one card game on uh, the app store. So again, you're gonna get it and download it and enjoy it because this is, uh, you know, they have a bunch of different events in the game, um, but there are many different ways to play and I love playing it online. Um, also in person as well. So let's, let's get into it. Um, so this is Uno. Yeah, confirm your uh, um, age. And then you can, you can sign in uh, if you would like, um, you know, to be able to play with other players, etc. cetera. Um, so it's, it's quite simple. So uh, like you can sign in with your Apple ID, with Game Center, even more options, right? Um, so I'm gonna sign in with um, Apple Game Center. Yeah. And then, yeah, I want notifications uh, for, you know, any events or things of that nature. So like, this is what um, uh, your app will look like. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So for settings, I'm gonna turn off the music so you all can hear me. Um, but yes, there's the classic mode. You can also play with friends. Um, and there are some different buttons here, like free rewards. Uh, you can get bonus rewards for watching ads. Mm. You can do that if you want. Store. Yep. So uh, you can do uh, playing some free coins. And then I can uh, watch a video to double them. I don't want to do that right now. Um, et cetera, coins. You know, of course, there are in-app purchases. You don't have to. I rarely, if ever, pay for things in-app, but it's a lot of fun. So, um, yeah. So uh, I can either play the classic mode right here, so classic Uno, or you can um, play with friends. So uh, you can create a room and have other people join you as well. So uh, for, they have a tutorial here as well. So you can learn how to win or play if you want. We're just gonna go ahead and play. So I'm gonna play a classic game. Yep, and in their classic game, you actually play with uh, with another individual. So it's like 2v2 in, in that way. So, um, yeah, so I'll just show you all. Uh, it goes by pretty fast, so it takes some getting used to, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so if my teammate wins, we win as well. So look, I can play this four, or I can play the six, nine, or this punk. So I'm gonna play this six. And there's, you see the call Uno button here on the right hand side. Skip. So Miguel is skipped and now it's my turn. So I can either play a skip and skip Diana, but I'm just gonna play, I'm gonna play the nine. So you just drag your finger to the card, just like how you would be playing a, an actual card. So I can even see my teammate's hand as well. So I'm gonna skip Diana to go to, to my teammate. Skip. Yep, so if either my, myself or my team wins or teammate wins, we both win. So I'm going to play this plus four <laughs> and I'm going to call yellow because I have more yellow, yellow cards in my hand. And again, the game keeps going. Draw four. So you see there's uh -huh. a time limit at the, at the top left. So, you know, if no one wins yellow. after two minutes, then it's whoever has the least amount of cards. Green. Oh, they just changed the color. I have to, I have to draw, I have to draw a card. You see the deck of cards here at the top left? I have to draw a card and I can either keep it or play it. I'm going to play it because it matched the color. So look, my teammate only has green cards, so they might win. <laughs> I have to draw another card. Oh, I will, I will, hmm. I'm going to keep that card because I might want my teammate to win because it looks like they have an easier path. Yep, they call it Uno. Four, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that card. Again, I'm believing in my team, teammate. Keep. And look, we win. <laughs> Love it. So we won. And we want some coins, you all. So, you know, with this 2v2 Super version. Super duper. 
Um, there you go. That's, that's one way to play Uno, but same concepts apply. So look, uh, I can even play single. So like two, 2v2 here at the top, and then I can play a single version as well. So um, if you want to participate in this one, uh, you all can uh, unmute and, you know, um, just uh, share your thoughts. So uh, you all can unmute yourself if you want to play along for this round. So let's do a classic game. So uh, just by myself and let's see what happens. So I'm playing versus everyone else. So let's see if we can win, you all. <laughs> uh, oh, I like my hand. Uh, let's see. I'm going to play a two. You know, if I had any other twos, I would have kept that in my hand. But it's, you see, it's very, it's uh, not fast paced, but, you know, the game doesn't take too long. So I'm going to. Use not my plus four. I might want that later. I'm going to use the wild and select yellow. Yellow. Because someone changed the color on me, so I'm, I'm changing it back. <laughs> you could have yep. used the four yellow. <laughs> yeah, so now the three. So it has to be either the same color or the same number. If it's not right. either, I cannot play that card. Yeah. Put um, the plus mm -hmm. twos. I, so now I can't because now the color is red. So I'm going to use my plus four now because I don't, I can draw a card, but I don't want to. And I'm going to select yellow. Yellow. So I made Anthony draw four and I, and I skipped his turn. <laughs> draw four. Mm. Let's draw four. You playing solo down there, Alex? Yeah, just solo. So it's just, it's okay. just me. I don't have no teammates. So look, now it's yellow. So. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play my skip. Skip. You know more skip. chance. Of, look, you see now it changed the color, so now I have to draw a card. Oh, I'm gonna play that card. Draw two. <laughs> Anthony's yeah. not having a good day. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now it's Jennifer's turn. Eight. So now I have to draw again. Man. You have to draw. Get the green. Yeah. So now I don't. I you know. Have yeah, to skip my turn. Game. No cards that I can play. Oh, now I now there I don't have to. Draw they two. played a they played a yellow four, so I can oh. make Anthony draw yet again. Draw two. Oh, look, Wendy's at one <laughs> card. Oh, Jason. and they changed the color. Wow. So I'm gonna play that. Let's hope Whitney doesn't have a red or a six. Hmm. Oh, well, look, Whitney has to draw. Yes, we still we're still in it to win it, you guys. <laughs> Red. Red. Mm. Yeah. I don't have a red card. I have to draw again. And I cannot play that. Oh, wow. Whitney change it back to yellow. Oh, wow. I'm going to play. I'm going to play the seven. You see at the top left, you have 30 seconds left for the round. So. Uno. We could still win. Uno. Red. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just got plus four. Wow. Uh, does Jennifer still have a yellow card? Um, I can challenge it. No, draw I'm going to draw the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so there's six seconds left. <laughs> oh, wow. Wendy just won at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> One second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. So, you know. It's okay. Things like that happen, but Don't that's, stop that's now. a lot of fun. It, it requires a lot of, you know, thinking and, you know, just, you know, lot, lots to do. So um, that was the game of, of Uno. And that was so much fun uh, uh, playing with you all that round as well. So, uh, um, so yes. Um, again, thank you all for attending today's session. It was a lot of fun. And of course, I like to end with an overview and a discussion. So, you know, anything you want me to go over. And I also have some questions for you all here as well. Um, what is one new fact that you learned today? What app or apps are you interested in trying out? Uh, what was your favorite tabletop game growing up? And or how does playing tabletop games positively or how can it positively impact your life? So I'll be taking um, some hands. So um, if you would like to, you know, just share what you thought of today, comment. Any questions, anything you want me to go over?
please raise your hand and I have a couple minutes to do that. So, you know, please feel free to raise your hand and I would love to um, chat with you. So uh, first up is Brenda. Hey, Hi, Brenda, how are you? I'm good. Alice, I played a lot of tabletop games when I was coming. I had Monopoly, I had Scrabble, mm -hmm. had Pacino. Oh my God, we had a bunch of uh, games and we played, well, we played, I came up from a family of card players. So <laughs> I learned, I learned Pity Pat first, then I learned Tunk and then Spades and then Big Whist. <laughs> so I, I, I've been playing cards and, and games for, for a long time. And I've already downloaded um, the uh, chess game on my tap on my iPad, and mm -hmm. and also the Battleship. Well, it's called Battle Fleet, but when, yeah, in my fleet, day fleet it was battle. called Battleship. So, uh -huh. <laughs> and I played, I played that. I, I enjoy playing playing the games, especially Scrabble. They hate it when mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> when I wanted to play Scrabble because I had pulled my dictionary out. And, I mean, we didn't have a good time. <laughs> I have Scrabble and Words for Friends on my iPad, mm -hmm. so I play that mm -hmm. pretty regularly. I, you know, I like to learn words and play words. So yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> oh, I well, really I, I know you, you had a, you had attended this uh, uh, session before, and I'm, I'm glad that you're yeah. utilizing those. And yeah. um, you know, just because you mentioned that, next Thursday we'll be covering. Uh, um card games and then oh on God. Friday like of next week games. we'll be doing uh we'll be doing um tile games as well so oh, okay uh, so yeah just make sure you all come on for that you know I've done those before but some of you have you know just yeah. joined our program so hopefully you all enjoy that um as well and and yeah so I, I yeah. love those games and let you play them and I do too and uh, you know it, it keeps it keeps your brain sharp. So mm -hmm. yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> Thanks, um, Alex. <laughs> no problem, Brenda. Thanks for coming on, and uh, let sure. us know if you need anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Next up is Anne. Hi, Anne. Hope you enjoyed today's session. And um, uh, what you got for me today? <laughs> well, I, I I too have been. Um playing um scrabble um uh i had the scrabble game in fact we got two of them here we got something called topeka kansas i think it has something uh -huh. to do with, i can't remember how to play it i'd have to read the directions again we got two of the battleships and risk do you remember risk yeah well, i had mentioned risk uh in the uh, towards the yeah, beginning uh, <laughs> i yeah, never played uh, it though but <laughs> yeah monopoly we got two or three of those and um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, uh, I, uh, I learned a little bit something about chess. I wasn't too uh, um, versed on that. I never played chess. I played checkers, but I never mm -hmm. played chess because uh, nobody, uh, my son wasn't interested in, in chess for some reason. Well, we got a couple of those battleships. So I, I have to tune him in to play a game with me um, on, <laughs> on, on the uh, iPad or the computer. Yeah, so, and, and now with, with the iPad, this is something interesting. So I appreciate it. Oh, no problem, Anne. And yes, now because of that app for chess, now you don't have to have anyone show. You can show yourself by learning the process through the app because of that <laughs> yeah. tutorial that they mm -hmm. have. So, um, so yeah, just uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I love again games myself, and it makes me happy to hear that you have all of those and it just brings back some uh, nostalgia for myself. So um, I love talking about games and I'm happy that you uh, learned something new as well today, Anne. And yeah. I learned something off of this, um, off the iPad, I played a game called Cookies. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and, and uh, that's interesting because I'm always interested in words. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all, 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 mm, yeah, so, words so important yeah. to be able to, yeah, it's so important just to keep you know, especially that, so you're able to write and, and you know, uh, and speak spell and correctly. read. Yeah, <laughs> just all that. You know, we all need yeah. a reminder of some things nowadays. So, mm -hmm. you know, I love playing those games because it does reinforce, you know, the T-H-E. You know, at one point in my life, I didn't know how to spell the. So same thing, <laughs> the and was because, you know, the English language is just, uh, 
it's a it's a funny thing sometimes so it's it's not it's never a bad thing to learn more about our, our language it, it, right there's so many uh words that the scrabble has now uh mm -hmm. that, you know because like i put in um what did i put in uh fume and it wouldn't take fume but it took f-u-m and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, well, I'm, I'm not sure why I, that. I, I, I just know ordered me a word. Scrabble dictionary, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure it's the latest version because there, you know, we we'll, we'll actually be covering that next week. But uh, there, are, okay. there are words being added every every year. There are I don't know the frequency, but they're being added. Uh, you know, uh, in, in about each every year. So make sure it's the latest version. Okay. Okay, hon. Thank you but so thanks much. To, thank you for coming on. Yes, Appreciate I enjoy that. all this stuff that you teach us. Keeps your mind, keeps your mind working. Yeah, so, so thank you so mm -hmm. much. Let us know if you need anything else. And um, just to, I see in the chat, uh, Miss Rosemary, yes, I've played Pile on Uno before, if that's what you're referring to, where you can put many of the same number or, or sequentially, like one, two, three, four, or something like that. So I've played those before, but I love the classic version. You know, it, it's, uh, I guess, the most easiest um, to grasp. So, um, yes, I've played that before. Um, hi, Geraldine. How are you today? Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. Well, I learned something today. I learned that for thousands of years, people have been playing a board game. Senate. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of Senate until today. Mm -hmm. So they've been playing it all the time. And um, I never played a lot of board games, but I play, I, like Brenda, I played a lot of cards, Pinochle, <laughs> Big Whist, Spades, Tonk, started with Pity Pat, but I played all the <laughs> card games, but I never played much. I, I, I played Monopoly. I, I played mm -hmm. that, but I've never played a lot of board games. So it was interesting today, the whole session about the board games. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, th thank you so much for that, Geraldine. And uh, yeah, so, you know, tabletop games, you know, it, it's fun, you know, and when I was thinking, when I, you know, thinking about when I was younger to play them because, you know, with the pieces or something new and such. But, you know, yeah. nowadays, you know, I, I, I like it on the iPad because there's no mess, no fuss, no, you know, none of that. It's all virtual yeah. and it's really easy to access. So, you know, uh -huh. there's advantages and disadvantages. So I love playing a regular card game, you know, with my friend if I'm out. But, I, you know, uh, even if I'm with someone, I, I might want to play the virtual version because, you know, I may, uh -huh. have, I may not have my cards, but I do have my iPad. So uh -huh. um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, thanks so much for coming on, Geraldine. I appreciate your participation. Thank you. And thank you. And uh, by the way, don't forget to stay on you all to complete the poll so you can let us know how you felt about today's session. Thank you so much. Um, we have Ms. Cassandra, and then uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Thomas come on. Hi, Cassandra. How are you? All righty. Um, one new fact that I learned today was... Um, about the chess, um, mm -hmm. I'm like Brendan Geraldine. I done played all the card games. I only played <laughs> one board game. That was Monopoly also. But I've always wanted to learn how to play chess because all my sons and their buddies, they always play chess when we have parties mm -hmm. and stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I was glad to find out that you say that we can download that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Real Chess 3D. If you go in the App Store and you download it, you'll be able to play the game, but also learn how to play um, using the you know tutorial that you had seen earlier in the session. So um, okay. I'm glad Real you were chess able to. 3D. Yes, and Real then if you want to, if you, yes, and just as a reminder, our daily emails have all of the descriptions like of the apps that we go over. So you can also check out our daily email, Cassandra. And, and see the list of the apps that we covered today, okay? Okay, thank you. But, oh, no problem, Ms. Cassandra, thanks for coming on. I, I hope you enjoyed today and, and uh, make sure you stay on for the poll, all right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, uh, before we start our poll, I may be able to answer others as well during it, but we have Mr. Thomas. Uh, Got to hit. Hi there, there you yeah, go. I got it. 
Listen, when I was a kid, we used to play a game called Parcheesi. Parcheesi? Oh, okay. I've, yeah. I've heard of that. <laughs> we, used to, we used to play it for hours and hours <laughs> and hours. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And also I played a lot of Scrabble. Uh, but I enjoyed, oh, yes. this, I enjoyed today's program very much. It brought back many happy memories. Oh, well, thank you so much for that, Mr. Thomas. It's nice okay. to hear from you uh, today. And uh, like I said to Brenda and to the others as well, uh, um, you know, these are, these are, well, these are technically, oh, I call them tabletop games. So they can also be a card game or a board game, but right. these were specifically played originally on a table. So next Thursday at 1.30, you'll be covering um, card games. So some card games that uh, you know, you all seen the likes, so I look forward to that. And then next Friday, we'll be on Friday advanced session at 10 a.m. We'll be doing tile games as well. So tile games. Yeah, tile games. So games played with the tile. So I'm I'm uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, today, Mr. Thomas. Thanks for coming Very on. Much. And of course, let us know if you need anything else. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Um. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start our poll. And then uh, I will um, address Ms. Vaughn and uh, Ann, so that way we can uh, get this going. So um, make sure, let's all make sure we're all in Zoom um, to fill out the poll. And then I'll also be able to uh, chat with those that still would like to answer one of these questions or have a question themselves. So I just opened the poll. So make sure you all fill it out. And I appreciate that. Um, Avon, did you have a question or do you, did you want to comment? You can unmute yourself. I know you may be doing the poll right Very now. Very quickly, but... yes. Uh -huh. um, can you just send someone an app? At like I'd like my son to uh, get that chess app. Yes, that's a great question, Avon. So thank you so much for that. So um, I, uh, when I did downloading apps on uh, this last Friday, we we actually talked about it as well. So anytime I do the downloading app session, make sure you all attend that uh, for this information. But if you're if you're in an app, so let's say you did want to share that chess app, right, Yvonne? So yes. I'm going to type in Real Chess 3D in the app store like before. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to tap on the app. And if you notice on the top right hand side, what button is there? The share button, right? Oh, so okay. when you hit when you hit the share button, of course, you're able to send it through iMessage, through mail. You can even copy the link um, to that app and paste it. Um, but if I hit mail, look what it does. It, it opens a mail app or email. It has the link, the, the icon. Um, so all I have to, would do is put in that person's email address and maybe the subject if I, uh, as well. So that's one way to um, share an app. Um, you can also share an app if I go to the app, you know, if I'm on my home screen, I'm looking for it, right? So uh, let's see, Real Chess 3D. It is, if I look on my iPad. Um, I see it right here on the second row, the last icon, right, Yvonne? So if you, right. if another way, another way to share an app, if you hold onto an app with your finger, like you hold onto it, Look what that does. It says oh, yes. share app. So I can also do it from there. So if you know where the icon is, look, it, the same thing comes up where I can do it through mail as well. But so if you hold on to any app, like these are all the apps that we've covered at some point. So you may see what we may be covering next week, but you can hold and you can then share the app that way as well. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Oh, no problem, Yvonne. I hope you enjoyed today and, and thanks for Absolutely. coming on as always. It was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. Oh, th thanks so much, Yvonne. Let us know if you need anything else, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, more than uh, almost a quarter of you have filled out the, serve, uh, the poll. Please make sure you fill out the poll to the best of your ability. If you do not see the poll, um, you can tap on more at the top right and then hit polls and quizzes and you'll be able to access it that way as well. So. Um, just make sure you fill out each of the four questions. Um, we'll hear from Anne, then Miss Maddie, and then um, Mr. Angela. Hi, Anne. How's it going? I, I, I just wanted to tell you uh, <clears throat> uh, today is my 
godmother's 101st birthday. And what she wanted as a gift was for me to play Scrabble with her on the computer. So uh, that lets you know that a 101-year-old's brain is still working real good. Oh, my goodness. Well, tell her happy birthday from, well, from myself and from us. And, you know, I'm glad that you were, uh, you know, uh, we had covered that before. We'll be covering that next week. One of the options. Yeah, Scrabble. We so um, that sounds so lovely. And I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Well, I, I had to share that with you because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to teach her how to do it on the computer. So that, that, that that's uh, kudos for you, honey. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I'm glad I was able to bring some light to uh, her birthday and to yeah. yourself as well. I appreciate that. Anne. And thank uh, you. Uh, let us know how it goes or let me know how it goes. I, I will. Okay. You, you have a good day and thanks for coming you, you, on. You too. And God bless you. Stay warm. You, you as well. Everyone stay warm. I know it's yes. so cold out there. And please it is. let it, everyone it, be safe. But I appreciate you still coming on and learning today. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Maddie. How are you? Fine, and you, Al. Just quick, just quickly. Um, you were saying that board games. If, if I'm not, I, I don't. Um, I hope I have it right. You were saying mm -hmm. that board games were a lot came from like you said Germany. Yeah, the t so we're talking about yeah table yeah table table yeah, yeah so yeah. if I yeah, yeah so if I go to the history yeah you know and, and is another the country known Germany game. Germany yeah. and what like Canada something like that yeah chess came from India backgammon came from Persia snakes and ladders came from um, India um, you know all all of the all these different games that that we know to this day are you know are as a result of history so you know it's not again like i said it's not too much different really than what we play today it's just right. in a more modern format right yeah but i think it said a lot of games you know uh board games of today came from uh germany was it germany? oh the video it was from yeah it was from the video so the main one and another and another country? settlers yeah, Settlers of Caden. I'm not sure the other country, but I know was it Germany. Was I thinking it was like up, the, up in Canada, like Canada or something like that? Yeah, I think I think they said that too. You know, but it's it's everywhere. Like it's just amazing where every different well, country well, and culture has their own different right. versions and, and of I the was, game. I, yeah, I was thinking that because these people have very, 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 very long winters, and there's not much to do in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was could have been one of the reasons why so many games emanated from those areas. Yeah, yes, I I, I agree with that. I mean, you know, they, they uh, didn't have what we had today with all this, you know, entertainment and, right. and things of that nature, right? I remember when we did our a training on apps for movie and TV, and we just learned about the history of like how TVs and these devices came to be, and. Um, it just makes us be grateful for what we have now because it, it's so it's so streamlined and you know it just takes a bit right. of effort to you know uh, to hop on and to enjoy what you know uh, we have to offer these days uh, right. with our entertainment. Right. So. And people are not as don't get as snowbound yeah. as they used to. Right. But yeah. with COVID, you know, with COVID, that's when you know they were talking about the jump. It really jumped. You know, right, because okay. people were stuck at home too. So you know, there was the resurgence before 2020, right? But with the with the pandemic, with things that were in our past, a lot of them came to our presence. And games and board games were became one of those things. So you know, uh, they're, they're still really, really popular to this day because of mm -hmm. many different factors. But because they're fun, and uh, they. Uh, you know, they give us a lot of skills. As Miss Melanie said, a, a Monopoly helped us learn how to count money. And um, and yeah, so things of that nature as well. Yes, yes. Um, it, it just was like, it, that was just the thought that came, you know, it's like, wow, why mm -hmm. those oh. different places where games were invented, you know, more from those areas. And that's like, people didn't have anything to do. 
<laughs> in, in that way. So they, they and they needed to be and... entertained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're all Thank humans you. are social creatures at the end of the day, right? So this is definitely a uh, result of that um, human nature. So it's, uh, again, nice to see how far you come in. Thank you so much for coming on, Maddie. And I appreciate Thank your you. participation in words as always. Thank, Thank you. you. You have a good one. You as well. Um, thank you for filling up the poll. Just went ahead and uh, ended the poll. So thank you all for um, filling it out. And last but not least for today for our questions before we end is Mr. Angela. Uh, how are you doing today? Hello there, Alex, everybody. Uh, I just, uh, I'm feeling good. I just wanted to say, uh, you've done it again. You've done it again. You've done it again. You know, uh, <laughs> It's getting good and good, you know. I, I really enjoyed this, and uh, I had a comment, and uh, it's about the the backgammon game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It wasn't well. It may have been a little bit popular, but it got very popular, like in the eighties, uh, mm. in a, in a uh, nightclub circuit and whatnot. They used to have a a club on. 16th and R Street Northwest uh -huh, uh -huh. called the Box <laughs> Trap, and uh, uh -huh. it, it was like a townhouse. And well, it was a townhouse, and they turned it into a club and made it very elite. And only very elite people were supposed to go there and whatnot and so forth. But anyway, uh, on one of the floors, they had nothing but different games, and they <laughs> had people uh, in in a uh, hundred dollar like. Hollywood style uh, playing backgammon and whatnot it was very mm -hmm. very exclusive, you know. Like I think it was a thousand dollars for a lifetime membership, and uh, you know, of course, the club is not there anymore. So I guess that's the lifetime of the club, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, it was very interesting, you know. And I used to see the people playing backgammon, and uh, I didn't understand the game, you know. <laughs> when you explained it just now. It was a little confusing this time too, you know. I have to get into it, you know. But the computer yeah. makes, or the iPad makes it very, very uh, easy, easier. Oh know? yeah, way way easier than than physical pieces in some ways. And yeah, I mean the world is your oyster. If you go on App Store, search backgammon. There's tons and tons of those. Send it tons and those. Uh, any kind of game, you know. There's so many different options as well. So uh, yeah, just it's just about exploring, and I uh, um, really appreciate the feedback. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is, hey, you know, this is what we do on uh, Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Um, for our advanced sessions. So you know, mm -hmm. if you want to experience more of this, you know, I would love to see not just you, but all of us on that, you know, our advanced sessions. Right. So that way we can go into more, you know, fun and different topics. And as you can see, you got a little bit of history and fun facts and you know, some entertainment with playing these games. So, right. you know, um, you know, it, it, I would just recommend, you, you know, you get on and, you know, also to our lunch clubs as well. You know, it's, it, it's a lot of, you know, a, a, lots of learning as well. So okay. um, we have a lot to offer. So just try to check it out and check out our daily emails for what's upcoming for the- uh, All right. For the Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank oh, you, everybody. No. God bless. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Miss Angela. You have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. Okay. Take care. Mm hmm And uh, Bridget said, uh, Fox Trap was on R Street Northwest, later became a club on the Southwest Waterfront. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. <laughs> um, thank you, Miss Wilmington, for your kind message. Um, you got, yeah, learning how to use it on your iPad. It's a lot of fun, and it's easy cleanup, right? <laughs> um, yeah, there are many different apps that you can use to play, to enjoy yourself. So, um, so yeah, uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's session. I'm going to go ahead and end uh, for the day. Um, tomorrow we have our Zoom, our advanced session on creating a Zoom account. So make sure you all come on at 10 a.m. for that. We'll be traveling to Russia at 12 p.m. with Lou. And of course, we have our prizes as well for our trivia. And then at 1.30, we'll be covering one of my favorite modules, module six, about Zoom and how to um, add a virtual background when your video is on. So 
Uh, make sure you check out our daily emails. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. And it was a pleasure and honor to present for you all today.